talk to you about returning next year, or what kind of plans are there for you? Uh, my exit meeting is at, actually, it's, it's in a couple minutes, see? Okay. So that's where I was going before you asked that one. So I'll talk about that when we get, go talk to him. What are your hopes? I hope to be a Buccaneer. Yeah. I know you reflected on being able to come back to your home and your journey, your full circle journey to get to this moment. Just can you put it into words? what it means to be in the league for 11 years, considering all you've been through? Uh, well, each year I've been in the league, I try to cherish it like it was my last because it's a short career usually for guys. Um, be able to play a playoff game in my home city uh, was huge. I don't like the outcome, of course, but um, it was still fun nonetheless. Being able to ride with these guys as a, as a group has really worked hard kept our head down, kept rolling. No matter what came our way, we just kept fighting. It was awesome. How do you describe that ride, considering you guys were four and seven at one point and you claw your way back into the division round? <laughs> you said it within the question, clawing your way back. Just like I say, you put your head down and you work and you believe in each other, believe in the goal and the mission, you can achieve anything. And I think it showed. Well, what did it mean to play for uh, Todd Bowles for another season, just the way that he kept the group together when there were some tough times, and then coming out the other side and winning the division and accomplishing what you guys accomplished? I never had a doubt, uh, especially playing with Coach Bowles. Like I said, like knowing the type of man that he is and the coach he is, he can get guys to run through a wall for him, and I think you saw it. Most guys that check out, well, I ain't never been on a team that checked out per se, but I hear most guys that check out and not you know work and give everything they have, but – you never saw any quitting, nobody eyes, nobody gave up, always came to practice and worked as hard as they could every single day. Some folks seem to be of the belief that a coach needs to be a yeller and a screamer to get guys to run through a brick wall for him, but Coach Bowles um, doesn't seem to, to do that. Can you just speak to that? And I know he's he he there's certain things he may do behind closed doors that he's not doing at the podium either. Uh, no, the guy that y'all see is the guy. That he is. He's a hilarious dude too, by the way. He's really funny. I don't know if you ever heard any of his jokes, but um. You've got, got a very uh, a dry sense of humor. Self-deprecating. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious to me, um, but as I, for him to be able to motivate us like that, because you got to think of so many different personalities, and for everybody to be able to put their head down and work consistently and not give up, it has to be something there. And no, he's not a yeller. He gives everybody respect, treats you like a man, and expects you to give results like a man. And I think that's why we can work how we work. I know with Coach Denji, it was like if he looked at you, you already felt like, like you don't <laughs> want that look. Is Coach Bowles like that too? Uh, you, you don't want to disappoint because I, like personally, I know how much he puts into the game plan to be able to prepare. So I don't want to ever be lacking in my preparation just for the sake of respect for him or in the team. What does it say to you about this organization, the fact that, you know, some teams, you lose five out of six games, the head coach is gone, but they stayed patient, and you saw what he and his coaching staff and the players were able to deliver. We got some results, didn't we? <laughs> we, we got the division. Uh, made it second round in the playoffs, but nobody thought we would. But now can we want it? But, man, was it not a fun ride to see. Thanks for your time, Will. I appreciate it.